So next we need to calculate uh, derivative derivative with respect to each weight for each input. Right? So you're basically calculating derivative of your input respective weights. So the inputs the inputs for uh, this particular uh, node on neuron is basically you have uh, h2 output 1, h2 output 2 and h2 output 3. Correct. So similarly so basically we would calculate the derivative with respect to weights for each of this. So all of these I think one thing which you would see is bias term is basically uh, ignored. Uh, since bias is basically a constant derivative everywhere it's basically ignored but uh, uh, for yeah so since bias is basically a constant it's basically ignored so when you calculate derivatives for each of this basically what would happen is weights of k1l1 that's basically since it's constant uh, the first term output would be h2 output 1 remaining these two would be 0 the remaining 2 would be 0 as a uh, derivative of uh, this thing is constant. So all of this is constant, it, would, it is 0. So therefore by symmetry, uh, this is in 1 delta of O in 1 by delta K1 L1, O in K2 L2, O in K3 L3, this is basically as well output as. Correct. Now I think now we have calculated uh, derivative, we have basically calculated all three derivatives, correct? Derivative of error with respect to your uh, weights, derivative of input with respect to your uh, output, and uh, so derivative of output respect to input, and your final derivative of uh, input respect to your weights. Next would be aggregating all of them, correct? And calculating your delta. I think, oh yeah, as you can see, this is the exact same thing which I'm sure you would have seen your gradient descent calculations in linear regression right learning rate into each one of these delta so after you get after you calculate each one of these delta basically you update your value of your weights so w dash kl correct is represents the updated value represents the updated value of your weights okay okay so this is again very similar to your, uh, I think I would say, what, very similar to your gradient descent calculation and linear regression. The only sort of difference is over there it was just a, you can think of it as one dimensional this thing where W0, W1, W2 were the only ones which are considered. Uh, but over here, what has happened is that you can think of it in terms of a 3 cross 3, or this is basically a multi dimensional weight calculation, right? So you are calculating the values of weights for each one of them and um, K1 L1 you basically calculating the update of your weights, K1 L2 you are calculating the updates of your weights, K1 L3 similarly and so on, K2 L1, K2 L2, K2 L3 and so on. So this is basically one updation calculation. So more or less the same process or the same step is followed across the H2 to hidden layer 2 to 1 and hidden layer 1 to input. Right. So this is only after all of these happens only then you say you have basically completed one epoch. Right. So this combination of forward pass and backward pass basically completes one epoch. So in this so after one epoch is completed, you basically again continue with the next epoch obviously. So then, since this being an iterative process, you would, this process would continue. Uh, so the stopping criteria for O here is whenever uh, it reaches convergence. So again, uh, when when do you know it reaches convergence? So again, all of these topics are again covered in uh, bias and variance topics. So you basically look at your training curves, training error rates as well as test error rates. So it, I think it's yeah it's more or less the same concept over here as well. Right. So whenever the model reaches convergence, you basically stop uh, your training process. So there are other uh, if you use libraries like Keras, there are other terms which would uh, basically stop the training process. If even after ten, even after say a particular number of iterations, the error rate is more or less remains constant. Then basically you can configure it to uh, make sure the training stops. And there there are other uh, Configure parameters in Keras 
and other similar i think it should be there in other libraries as well but so you can basically configure it to stop in such conditions as well right so i think what basically what we have seen uh, over the over the past few sessions is we have basically seen how to calculate forward pass we have we have i think starting we have basically taken a thing thing of it as a toy example with um, as a, with weights with, with initial inputs weights and then we have randomly created weights then we calculated forward pass from the input from the first input to hidden layer 1 hidden layer 1 to hidden layer 2 then finally output this is your forward pass and we saw the backward pass for output layer to hidden layer 2 uh, i think it would follow the si similar set of steps would follow from hidden layer 2 to hidden layer 1 and from hidden layer 1 to input now obviously the only thing which would change over there is basically your derivatives would change right because you over there you have sigmoid and you have relu in each of these hidden layers so the derivatives over there would change but the process is more or less the same right so this is basically what happens in the neural network uh, so in more complex say deep neural networks there would be some additional concepts but the basic logic would be the same training of neural network the basic logic would be the same but only difference over there is the number of neurons or the number of nodes would increase the number of hidden layers will increase and uh, yeah depending on where it is used for for vision applications uh, there are few certain again fundamental topics to cover if if deep learning uh, models if if the deep deep nets are used for text applications there are again certain uh, again additional uh, topics it needs to be covered but i think all of it will be covered in the next few sessions but i think this all the topics we have covered until now is definitely a very good uh, very useful set of topics for understanding how one neural network actually works